Hey Scott, how you doing? I'm uh, good, Nick. I saw you listed in the uh, in the, the NAB guide, the exhibitors, and I thought metal craft for I mean all of our synth cases are made of metal craft and effects pedals and stuff, and you're the guys and gals that make that stuff. So I thought it'd be interesting to talk to you. So tell me about how it works. <laughs> well, it generally starts with an idea, uh, and since we're a job shop, it's not my idea. Uh, but I'll have somebody approach me and say that they uh, they have a new idea for a pedal or a keyboard or uh, an amplifier or something and most of the time uh, it's the internals that they know about and then they have to put their product inside of a unit of some kind or another. Uh, it could be a rack unit, it could be a box, it can be uh, just a you know straight up rack with no uh, surroundings and just a front panel uh, you know for a rack but yeah. So it's, do you do kind of standard cases, like, you know, 90 inch racks with, you know, it's well, hole punches quite, as well as uh, custom ones? Or? Quite the contrary. We have no standard cases on the shelf. So we are uh, what they call, again, as I said, a job shop. Right. Uh, so we're, everything's made to order. Now we make standard cases to order, but usually there's some kind of a change. Whether it be, and if I can show some examples, whether it be that uh, the hole pattern needs to be a specific hole pattern, yeah. Um, on an otherwise standard case. Uh, in this case, this was not a standard case uh, until we started developing it with some of our early customers about 20, 25 years ago, where they wanted to find a way to do a pedal. Yeah, that's in, like a guitar pedal kind of This format. is a guitar pedal. And uh, they wanted to do it in a way that was going to save money off of welding. It used to be that you either needed to get a um, welded case, which was very expensive, or you, had, you would buy a Hammond case that was pre-manufactured and drill everything by hand. Right. Um, so companies decided that uh, you know, it just looked boring, and it is boring. The cases are also not that well built, uh, especially Hammond cases. When you use it as a uh, stomp box, basically you start cracking the, you know, uh, the casing because it's there's too much silicon in the metal in order to uh, to manufacture that kind of a box. Right. So these guys, so these are these look like they're anodized of some some kind. Correct. Right? There's so different finishes here. So we've got uh, this is a paint, two different varieties of blue paint, and then we have an anodize here. This is a green anodize, and then this is a purple anodize. And it's a slight bright finish, so yeah. there's a variation that you can do on brightness. Uh, the problem with anodize is it's very hard to match colors from run to run. Ah, so whatever okay. run you do on anodize, that's the that's the only one that's going to match. Um, it's almost impossible to match colors, uh, even blacks. You end up with shades of black. So, so presumably you have kind of what like uh, folding machines and big uh, CNC robots and all that kind of stuff. Correct. So we we have a variety of laser machine. We have uh, punch presses because we do a lot of countersinking. Countersinking by hand is expensive. Countersinking on the machine is a tenth of a penny. So we'll pre countersink, pre punch whatever needs to be uh, punched. Then we can laser that's, that's, it. That's countersink. This is countersink right, okay, exactly. Yeah. And then we can laser it after the fact uh, so that you get both a clean edge, plus you get the, the countersinks at a very discount price. And we can do all of this made to order in the United States, in Pasadena. So we are, uh, we are not manufacturing overseas. So what are the challenges? I mean, say for instance with a, a larger instrument, say maybe a keyboard or something like that, mm -hmm. where you've got quite a big span of case. Right. How do you brace all of that stuff to stop it being sort of bendy in the middle? Is there, are there tricks? So uh, in, in our case, we went and bought electric brakes, press brakes, and the electric press brake actually measures the material thickness because of resistance, as most people who do pedals understand. The resistance when the brake would meet the metal you will end up with uh, the measurement, the metal, you know, the brake knows that the metal is thicker or thinner and it'll compensate. And then it'll compensate across the entire bed. So when we do six foot, seven foot long uh, things, about the biggest that we do is about seven, seven and a half feet, just because there's, there's very little in the music industry that's gonna be much bigger than that without going into construction side, and yeah. that's not us. Um, it actually compensates across the bed now so it's very accurate from end to end and in the center. You don't get the, the bowing that you used to get in the old days with hydraulic or mechanical. I've, 
Bizarrely, I happen to follow Bailey Industrial on uh, on Instagram. Is that, are those the sort of brake presses that you're using? Those kind most of likely. I, I can't answer that for a fact, but I suspect it is. Yes. Let's just pretend it is, because then it's yeah. all night and time. Okay. So what if somebody comes to you? I mean, do you, is there a minimum run? I mean, do you do one-off prototypes, or do you have to do like? We do one-offs. The reason is my best customer today, 20 years ago, came in and said, "Hey, I've got this idea for a pedal." We'd like to uh, try something new, and uh, will you work with us? And we, we don't want it to look like the same old pedals that are being sold by, you know, and I, I won't mention names, but, uh, and I said, I'd love to work with you. And so we'll do one-offs. Uh, it was a little painful for the first five years. Um, we would charge a minimum price just to cover material and labor, and they tested a whole bunch of ideas and went out and looked and tried to find you know musicians that liked it, get feedback, and eventually they're now one of my biggest customers. Uh, we're doing usually uh, 500 to 2,000 piece runs at a time, um, and we've got a great relationship because we grew with them and they grew with us, and that's what we like. So uh, the only way to get those customers is to be willing to work with people when they're starting and you develop a loyalty uh, that's a, you know, a beautiful thing. Excellent. Well, thank you for giving us an insight into uh, maybe some area of the industry that people don't know about. Thank you very yeah. much. Well, I really appreciate it, Nick. Um, pleasure to have you.